Startup Showcase speaker. And so today, that is Andrea Wang. She is the founder of Ahead Medicine. Ahead focuses on AI-based diagnostic tools for cancer precision medicine, and they have developed a really interesting uh, flow that's uh, based, it's, the prototype's been built into AWS, and they have, are already winning awards with it in the, um, in the community of uh, cytometry. So hopefully I didn't butcher that too much, Andrea, and we'll <laughs> turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Andrea Wayne. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Head Medicine. And, uh, and like Gordon mentions, I'm currently one of the Berkeley Sky that, uh 2020 spring cohort. So we have an upcoming demo day in September 15. And so like uh, uh, Bill just mentioned, so we really focus on AI power diagnostic for cancer precision medicine. And the reason uh, I, I really attached to this and started this venture with my co-founder is because I, uh, I'm a cancer patient myself. I, I had a thyroid cancer, metastatic thyroid cancer when I was 14. And back then it actually took me a year to figure out what it was. And so that uh, really drive me to make uh, cancer research into my lifelong missions. And then up until today, uh, when I started to work in the pharmaceutical industries, I still found that there are a lot of uh, clinical workflow that hasn't been optimized. And the tur test turnaround time delay is still the most common reason for cancer diagnosis delay. That's why uh, when w I was recruited to the hematology department hospital, we, uh, we get together with the physicians and I help uh, work with the AI engineer together, try to de develop telemedicine solutions. And as we are in the hematology department, so what we first like to focus on is for black cancer, including leukemia, lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. So currently there's a huge gap. Uh, maybe I'll just pass this because due to the time. There's a huge gap in turnaround type of routine tests that they use for uh, disease diagnosis and monitoring. And uh, the technology essentially, they just need to measure 30 to 40 uh, cell surface antigens on 100,000 cells per specimen. So you can imagine that the data dimensions and complexity is really high. And currently, uh, when physicians like to analyze it, they need just randomly take two markers being measured, make into a scatter plot, and they need to go over this for 100 at a time for every single case. So that's why the turnaround time in the hospital, in our hospital, is actually one to two weeks. And so what we did is we used large volume of uh, archive that we have uh, component diagnosis before and build a machine learning uh, algorithm uh, to, to perform a triage. So as you can see, this is the prototype that we ran on AWS. We are able to, so to let the users upload the data acquired from the flow cytometer to our platform and we'll be able to perform uh, the analysis for all the market being measured for multiple specimens simultaneously. And then for each specimen be measures, we'll provide them the results and we will visualize it to allow users to compare that specific sample to other specimens that we have confirmed diagnosis before. Yeah. So uh, the, the, re, uh, the main problem we like to tackle is uh, an ideal turnaround time. So right now with this uh, prototype we have tested is us uh, on average seven second per case compared to manual analysis, it takes 20 to 30 minutes for physicians. So it's a hundred times faster. So with this, we can have health physicians, no matter how many tests they order in the day, they can really identify what are the patients, uh, who are the patients they need to initiate the treatment sooner, rather than waiting for one to two weeks and knowing they should have initiated treatment like two weeks ago. And then um, we also conduct a uh, uh, a business case exercise with our partner at University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. We estimate that once we deploy the system, we will be able to reduce uh, the people times in the laboratory sp for this particular task and increase the service capacity. And right now, at the, during the COVID pandemic, every laboratory is really busy uh, trying to support the urgent demands. So the less time they can spend on this routine task, the more time and resources they can allocate to either develop new tasks or to support the urgent tasks like the COVID testing. Yeah. So uh, right now uh, we are, have a lot of partnership ongoing at this moment. Uh, 
we started at in you know, our university hospital in, in Taiwan, and we started a partner with Pittsburgh in 2018. Currently, we actually have an active pilot uh, with BMS, and where we're gonna co-develop a response prediction or drug response prediction algorithm together. And we actually build a whole data sharing and uh, model uh, training infrastructure on AWS as well. And because what when working with big corporate, they have very elaborate um, and high standard in terms of data security and transformation. So our engineering team actually uh, worked with them uh, for quite some time trying to uh, set a system that will fit their uh, IT requirement moving forward. And, and like I mentioned, uh, right now we have a lot of new collaborators that they are really interested in trying our platform. So the reason we choose AWS because it is the most um, widely adapt adaptable uh, cloud platform. And, and if we are working with healthcare system data, it has to be HIPAA compliant and it's, it's already pretty mature. And especially for a, a very diverse market like United States, once, uh, if we put this on the cloud, once we develop a new module, new analysis module, we can deploy to user fairly rapidly. And that's the main reason why we like to choose, uh, use, host our technology on the cloud platform. Yeah, so, uh, but even though, uh, because what we are doing is to support physician with diagnosis. So before we can really the open the, uh, the cloud uh, solution to, uh, hospitals or laboratory, we need to have this uh, product FDA clear, and then we can start it to uh, revenue, so user subscriptions or the reimbursement. And this another alternative approach is uh, uh, have a license to the instrument manufacturers, so that because they have their own reagent, they have instrument, they have a very rudimentary analysis software but it's not designed for clinical users. So I think we, uh, with that, we can have a very good complement to each other. Yeah. And this is actually the feedback that I got after I present at the Cyto Innovation Showcase. Sigma is actually one of the, uh, the biggest uh, full cytometer manufacturers. And they were, uh, I think they were, they were dominant in Europe and they just started com coming into Taiwan, uh, so sorry, coming into US and they have a instrument uh, rich, under the FDA registration. And so they believe that uh, because they, on the day to day, they have to process a lot of data. So they do believe what we are developing could really uh, drastically improve the current workflow in the flow cytometry space. No. Okay, and so our founding team are composed uh, by people from all the different places. I was trained in Baylor College Medicine. Uh, as a cancer researcher, and I went on to launch an oncology product in pharmaceuticals before I joined this team. And we have physicians, and we have AI engineers who is trained at USC in electrical engineering, and we have IP attorney and serial entrepreneur uh, came together as a team. And I think for the future media, I, I, it will be great if I can invite my software engineer and AI engineer within the team to uh, learn from each other and get a more experience because uh, before then, we're using our own uh, server hosted within the university hospital campus. So uh, we are fairly new uh, to using the full AWS system. It would be great that we can continue to learn and exchange the experience with the community. And that's my presentation. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. What a great story. Um, so we're open for questions for Andrea. And I guess you're also your colleague who's, uh, we have our quantum computing backgrounds for the cloud meetup organizers and you have your ahead backgrounds. Uh, so uh, I got a question was this, did I use AWS partner for implementation? Uh, no, I think I have to queue my uh, software development lead about <laughs> because he set up uh, the, all the AWS infrastructure for the team. Yes, we did not use work with AWS partnering and we set it up by ourselves. Were you guys implementing semi-supervised learners on the medical data and then having some kind of uh, confidence interval? 
cut off where you decided it was good enough at predicting? Oh, yeah, so because if we are dealing with uh, medical data and those are patients with life-threatening disease, so why not we only use supervised uh, machine learning because we need to confirm the patient's diagnosis and use them, the highly curated data sets, instructed data sets, uh, uh, as our in initial yeah. set, yes. Right. That's cool. And I have a question for the FDA software validation. Is it outsourced or, or by doing? Uh, yes, we will do it uh, in house with uh, the the infrastructure that I um, about just help set it up. But uh, like I mentioned, we will have to partner with uh, medical center and hospitals because the, those are the where the patients got tested. So we will have to partner with them and use. Uh, the da data came from their flow cytometer and we'll perform the prediction and to compare if uh, what we have developed is uh, equivalent to the current performance and is stable enough. Yeah, this is where I wonder if uh, blockchain technology would be uh, important to implement for security and scaling purposes like simultaneously to be able to incorporate blockchain technology and, and be able to protect users' uh, data while both training on that in real time and being able to predict. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so I, uh, as we are dealing with healthcare data, um, the privacy is always uh, one of the key uh, factors that we need to take care of. So we, we know currently a lot of users, they have a habit that they can, they like to input the patient's chart number while naming those files. So mm -hmm. what we can now with the team is they utilize a, a approach, try to extract only uh, the metadata that we needed for the predictions and leave all the sensitive data on site. And for the particular detail, I probably I think everybody will probably have to reach out to about a particular how how we got this done, and I also got approached as if we were consider using blockchain to uh, for the, the in the future, we do have uh, are interested, but right now we would like to focus on have our first version uh, middle valve product uh, in place, and uh, as this we are there there will be so many more modules we need to develop to make it a, a comprehensive platform for the clinical users. We, we do believe as it get become more and more mature, uh, it will be considered in our future pipeline. And uh, what are the other questions? Do you consider any other cloud providers, Azure, GCP, and what factors landed you at AWS? Yes, we actually, uh, we have, uh, I attend a lot of uh, healthcare related conferences and I asked a lot of uh, startup or alumni why they choose AWS. I think one of the, uh, the reason is because uh, in the US, AWS is uh, the widely adapt. And, but for some European users, they do prefer Azure simply it just because um, the users in the hospital, they are uh, used to the Microsoft setting. So it's easier to I would say for non non that technical users, it, it will be easy or um, it will ease the IT's uh, anxiety easier when you go through all those uh, due diligence process. But I haven't here, uh, I haven't get to know uh, a healthcare startup that actually adapts this GCP solution. So if anyone knew and it would be great, it, uh, they can share the reason. But the reason we pick AWS is because right now, is the uh, the widely adapt um, platform and uh, this very strong user community and tech support. Yeah. And so as there's a lot of well, everyone tends to gravitate to it. Yeah, because uh, especially for healthcare industry, uh, the users are very conservative because you have they have to allow of uh, factors they need to worry about. So they will, they really want to make sure that this is well accepted solutions before they really like to adapt it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, so if anyone uh, has more questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, uh, my email is andrea.wayne at headmedicine.com. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea, that was great.